the Spirits of Havana, and they're going on stand at the Jazz Bakery in Los Angeles. And then, if you'll mark down June and the uh, dates 27, 28, and 29, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in St. Paul, Minnesota, they'll warm up the Dakota Bar and Grill in Bandana Square, St. Paul. And they're led by two people, and one of them is the uh, soprano saxophonist you heard on this, Jane Burnett. She represents Canada and Cuba and all of the Afro-Cuban scene. Welcome into Minnesota Public Radio. Hi, how you doing? Well, I'm ready to dance. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> well, the spirit is uh, the spirit is right. It's good to have you there, and you represent Canada, of course, along with your husband. Mm-hmm. Tell me. Uh, when you think about uh, getting involved with Afro-Cuban, you don't think about it on a winter day in Canada. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me Believe about me. it. It's a good time. Good time to take a vacation. January, February in Toronto, Canada is cold and snowy, usually. And uh, anyway, in 1982, we took a, a vacation um, to Santiago, which is one particular part um not so known. I mean, Havana is a little bit more well known, but Santiago's at the other end of the island. And um, basically, just saw a cheap vacation in the paper, and uh, three forty nine it was for a week and hotel, meals, flight, and thought, what the heck? You know, might as well take a take a chance. And um, it was just an amazing, um, amazing trip. And of course, uh, never realized it would be such a big detour. And you know. And you, of course, are a soprano saxophonist, mm-hmm. and master of the reeds, uh, and one of the 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 jazz world's uh, most noted player among women, particularly representing uh, the other sex. Mm-hmm. And uh, you and your husband in the Oriente province uh, must have heard some music that yeah, uh, we were, turned we, you around. It was incredible, you know. Um, from the moment that we got there, you know, arriving in the airport, there was a band playing, and when we got on the bus, there was a band that was there to play us onto the bus, and when we got off the bus in the hotel lobby, there was another band, and then that night there was then an, another band, um, which traveled like an hour and a half every day from Santiago City to to this tourist resort that we were at, and this, this one particular band I'm speaking about was 18-piece song group, and... It was just truly amazing, and I guess a few days later we took a trip into Santiago City, and once again just were overwhelmed by just music everywhere. And and we continued to, to go to Cuba. I think we went about two months later we went again to Havana because we'd really gotten, you know, bit by the bug and um, went to Havana and met then again a whole other crowd of really tremendous musicians and it just you know it just continued to spiral like that 90 no 18 18 in 1987 we started planning how we could maybe do our first recording we had a few um jazz recordings out on the market at that point i think two or three and um i had been working with don poland fantastic piano player and um decided that maybe we should try and and do some sort of project with with the musicians that we were meeting and we then started um this the concept of trying to do some sort of cooperative uh co-production between Canada and Cuba and that's how we did our very first recording in 1990 well as you uh, play and also write this music uh you've made quite a transition from being a jazz saxophonist and flautist mm-hmm. What has happened to your performance? Uh, well, it's interesting. I, you know, for a while it was sort of like two parallel um, musics that were happening. Um, I was making a, you know, every year, every other year, a, um, a jazz recording. I had the opportunity to work with the piano player Paul Blay, and opportunity to work with vocalist Jean Lee and Sheila Jordan, and of course I mentioned Don Pullen. And in between that, we were doing um, various. Cuban projects. One was the first record, Spirits of Havana. Second record was called um, The Cuban Piano Masters, which was a totally opposite kind of Cuban record where there was no drums on it. We went from having a 10-piece drum group on Spirits of Havana to, to having two pianos, acoustic bass and myself, the two pianos being Frank Emilio, 
Cuban piano player and the great film composer Jose Maria Vitier and bass player who's now living here in Los Angeles, uh, Carlitos del Puerto, who was just 17 at the time. So we did that record, and then we did a record, Havana Flute Summer, Summit, excuse me, with um, all flute players, Richard Egways, Maraca, myself, and then did a record with Cubans and Brazilians called Rendezvous, Brazil, Cuba, and they were all, you know, always interspliced in with, with our different jazz recordings, more mainstream jazz recordings. And this particular record now that's, that, that we're, we're promoting and, and is the newest, Rhythm and Soul, is really kind of a combination of um, bringing all those elements together on one recording. A lot of the material on this new recording are original compositions by myself and my partner, Larry Kramer. And we composed the music with these Cuban rhythms in mind. And really it all sort of came together at once, whereas in the past, when we were, we were working with more traditional material and um, superimposing sort of jazz harmonies within the context of those pieces and expanding the areas, you know, for improvising. In this particular case, the compositions were composed with, with the Cuban rhythms in mind and therefore has much more of a, a jazz approach to it. Well, you certainly uh, communicate a passion for this. I, um, I wonder when you, uh, uh, when you play your compositions for Cuban artists, uh, they must uh, feel the fire. Yeah, well, I think they're always interested because we've always, you know, had a little bit of a different bent on, on um, you know, the material. And we went in in 1990 and we did a recording that was um, pretty adventuresome. Um, and at the time, there wasn't really people working with the folkloric musicians and using the religious drums, the bata drums. Um, at the time, the, the group Yoruba and Dabo, which is the folkloric group on that first recording, were dock workers, and they weren't even registered musicians with the state. And that was our, one of our first um, you know, things we had to sort of overcome. We had to get them registered as musicians so that they were even allowed to go into a recording studio. And so, you know, at first we were sort of looked at with a pretty, um, you know, we were looked at pretty closely, like, well, what are these, what is this couple doing? <laughs> and uh, I think now a lot of the musicians, um, Cuban musicians, know that we try some some very um, a, a different kind of concepts with the recordings. In fact, we just finished a recording a couple of months ago in Santiago where we had um, a 38-piece Congo group, Congo group being the group of place for carnivals, just drums and voices. Uh, the group is called Los Hoyos, and we combine them with a song Montuno group and a young piano player who was just 15 years old. And that was very, and actually also too a saxophone quartet that was based in Santiago. So that was a really a you know totally different concept. Nobody had really done anything like that before, and once again we were sort of turning some heads. The but jazz we've had image. a lot of fun, you know. It's really been it's really been fun. Well, the jazz image is talking with you, Jane Burnett, and you're getting acquainted with some of our people here in the mid continent. That's great to hear. And uh, we'll make a date with you for uh, June, beginning on the twenty seventh through the twenty ninth, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, for um, your engagement at the Dakota Bar and Grill. Mm -hmm. And you'll warm us up. I can't wait to get there. I mean, everyone's told me um, that Dakota is a really great place, and the people are really very, very nice that run it. And this will be our first time being, well, for not only for the Cubans, who've just been, you know, um, just a, a few weeks outside of Cuba. We're on tour in the States right now. But it'll be the first time for me being there, too, so I really look forward to it. Jane Burnett, uh, we'll look forward to getting acquainted with you and just uh, warming up with all of your feeling and passion for this genre that you're uh, melding between Canada and Cuba. Well, thanks a lot, and um, thank you for playing the record and giving us that support. Meantime, I know you're going to have a warm night in Los Angeles on stand at the Jazz Bakery. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a really nice room, and it's... Uh, 
It's definitely uh, it's definitely hot here right now, that's for sure. <laughs> well, if you can, bring some of the warmth with you. Okay. <laughs> All right. I will. And I think, uh, you know, when I think about your music, I have memories of Tito Puente and Machito and others. Yeah, those were the real greats. Well, we just, we try, and if we can, uh, you know, accomplish the... Uh, Wow, the the great music that those those musicians did. Uh, we'll we'll be pretty happy. Thank you for taking your life to do it. Thanks a lot. Good night.